smile. Okay, well, we should be live. So we're live now going, going out to the Facebook group and the YouTube channel as well as live. So there's three places where this can be picked up. And we're just waiting to get some feedback on how many people are online. Yes, we've got 36 online at the moment from the StreamYard platform. And don't know about the YouTube and stuff, but hello, Jose. Hello, Monroe. Good. Kasra, Stephen again. Good to see you, Stephen. And sorry, my Chinese reading is not that good. So, but hello from, from China there. <laughs> So welcome to all, and I'm going to do a slow introduction because people are dribbling in and numbers are going up slowly. And uh, anyway, so thanks to Ali to join us today. Ali, You're welcome. Is, uh, there's quite a few people interested to talk to Ali at the workshop, never mind the, the Q&A session here. And Brad, of course, again, joining me. Me and Brad, we did the, the one before, the Q&A. The Q&As are very very popular actually surprisingly so so thanks for that and uh colin says does al ever come on these well yes we were talking about getting al onto a a brief a brief q a before the end of the month and al is in brazil at the moment is in is in sao paulo brazil for a a live presentation today he'll be back in la next week and i will then talk to him about getting him live to to say hello to everybody so hello hello path okay still coming so son as as some of you can see if you use the comments we get instant feedback on the comments and still numbers coming up i've got some news on the hotel which i i guess i'm gonna have to probably say two or three times today because if people are coming in a little bit late they're probably going to want to know about what's happening with the hotel but quickly i'll perhaps if i do a brief a brief review now and then just repeat it a little bit later but tickets are going extremely well they're going much faster than we ever expected to be honest and we've now got nearly 90 seats filled so we're virtually full up nearly and we've got a larger room this time so we may try and make bit more space if if we go beyond beyond our sort of 100 seats that we've got available and but the problem with that of course is it means that people will be sitting further away from the screen so it's a bit of a compromise and uh, so that's the situation at the moment so nearly sold out thanks but on the hotel there is a problem with the first two nights before the conference before the workshop i should say and the hotel is fully booked. It's full up. So Thursday, Richard, Friday, Thursday and Friday, right? Thursday and Friday. So people who want to get there the night before it starts, if they've not already booked. And again, I did give lots of warning to people. Please book up, book up early, early, early. But it's now full. I've got a message from one, one helpful guy who's found a place 10 minutes walk away. There's quite a, it's Orlando. There's plenty of hotels all over the place, as you know. Yeah, and actually within walking distance, believe it or not, for America, to have something within walking distance is pretty novel, I think. But there's a place called the Red Roof Inn. Red Roof Inn. It's not a hotel, it's a inn, as it says. And the person's saying they're staying here for one, they're staying there for one night and then four nights in the in the hotel. But even the main nights in the hotel are, bro, we're over our allocation already. Uh, but they will, as long as there's rooms available, they will let you in. And it's always best to, to call. So thanks. Okay. So we're six, we're still still coming in. And go ahead and ask what for those of you that have questions for Ali, go ahead and ask it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So we can see him and answer. Say, yeah. <laughs> Use the comments to ask the questions. And Sean has just made a note that he's booked the hotel near the airport. Hope that's not too far. 
Well, from memory, the airport's about 25 minutes, 20. Can you remember about 20 yeah. minutes? Airport, you could probably find a, a hotel closer. Yeah, I think certainly certainly closer than, than that. It's, it's quite a long stretch down the main road, which it, well, it depends on the route you take, but the quickest route is to go past the hotel and come back again. And it's, it's, it's quite a distance. But I've I've asked the hotel already. I've had I've had no. Let me just check if I've had a response since I've been. I doubt it because they're on different time zone there. No, there's no answer. I was asking them, do they have any partners in the area that they can recommend? And no, they must have overflows every every now and again that they they must deal with. Anyway, so bring let the questions come in and then. We can make us make a start. We've got a few questions already, which Ali can make a start on those. And there's a question for Brad as well, so we can, we can make a start on those. Sure, let's do it. Sure. And uh, okay, perhaps I'll grab those questions and post them in the comments so people can read them. Yeah. Sure. Okay, Ali. So let's. Uh, if I can hand over to Ali. Thanks again, Ali, for joining us. My pleasure. And it's good good to see you online, and many people are good. Looking forward to listening to you. Let me. There's one question there that we can handle this now from Beth the Third. Mm -hmm. Is there an expectation? Yep, there you go. Thanks, Brad. Is there an expectation for everyone to trade while the conference is going? This isn't going to be an option. We're getting a very strong compared to last time. One thing we learned at the first conference is that the the Wi-Fi was not strong enough. Although it was promised to be strong enough, it was not. We're getting it 10 times at least more bandwidth this time, so it should not be a problem. So, yes, you can trade. Yes, you can go on the Internet. Ali's going to talk a little bit about an intranet a little bit later. But we don't recommend that you trade while you're being distracted. That applies to trading at home or trading in an office or trading anywhere. So be careful if you're trading. But, yes, we can. And just one comment really with that. If you're going to go to the event, part of the reason for being there is to get to watch Ali and Ali, get to actually witness their demeanor and the way they're trading. And there's more than 200 trading days in a year. So I would just, if you if you do trade at the conference, you're bound, you're probably going to, you're going to miss out on critical moments of just getting to see their demeanor and expression. You know, and Ali, I'm sure that's something you can comment on with just your how focused you are with when you're trading. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I have been in trading rooms where my mentors were trading when you know I was developing as a trader. And uh, one of the things I noticed when I was in the same situation as an attendee was that I learned quite, quite a lot more if I watched my chart and then watched my mentor to see what they would do on every bar. Because if I had a position on, then that would have taken me away from observing my mentor's uh, reactions to the market. And therefore, I would have missed that uh, learning moment. So it's entirely up to you. I mean, we obviously wouldn't limit anyone to do something or not to do something. But you have to um, you have to figure out what works for you best in in your circumstances at, at you know the knowledge and skill level where you are at uh, right now. Uh, but both is okay. I mean, so it's okay to just watch. It's okay to trade. It's okay to do some of both. However, it works for you. Okay. There's one question here, which is, oh, I think I've just lost it. Again, Shubham, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to put your name up there because you might. But one person says they've been making losses for the last three years. Some people can read the comments, yes, but I don't want to broadcast it on the screen here. Yep. Any advice? I think three years is not not too long. I mean, making losses. Don't be trading real money too soon. If you've been jumped in too soon and putting money in before you can make good money on the simulator or before really understanding the the price action methodology, it's better to back off and get good at understanding, get into depth, 
And three years is not too long for, you know, it took me five years actually before I could, you know, turn a sort of consistency. So don't get concerned, don't get put off and just keep working at it and work on your psychology, which is a, a common problem for us all being human beings and learn how to relax, learn how to listen to your thoughts and learn how to witness yourself with trading, separate yourselves inside your head, as it were, and don't get too hot up and concerned about it. It takes time. So if you're losing money, well, back off immediately and stop trading money and just I think you know, uh, revisit. Good uh, good. But I think um, for a developing trader, it's really best if you just focus on one or two things. Yeah. And usually just one. And sometimes that means uh, sitting there watching the chart for two or more hours without actually touching your mouse. But that mm -hmm. is the point. I mean, you have to focus your energies on doing one thing really well initially and then do the same thing for the second strategy or second concept mm -hmm. and then add on to it as you go along until you get to a point where everything connects together. So once you see a setup, you know the opposite trader is doing what, you know the with direction, with, with trend or with that setup direction, trader is doing what, how they are entering and exiting the market. So it's a fairly uh, complex neural network that has to be in place before somebody can really trade intuitively. And I talked about, talk about it in my article on how to become a professional price action trader. But initially, mm -hmm. If you are really focused on uh, being profitable, you have to be able to do one thing really well. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, ins and outs of it. You know, all the different variations, you know, uh, what are the market responses to that setup and what you would do with clarity when each one of those things happen. So that that's how, like, that's like my best recommendation if you want to really get going fast. No, that makes good. That makes good good advice again. Because if you look at yesterday, you could have been waiting several hours before the major trend reversal set up, and then if you're awake and trading, I was in bed by that time. But then it drops one hundred points, so you could have made one hell of a lot of money just on one set, just waiting for one setup. And it's one of the best trades that I writes about in his first book, and he oh, and he actually touches on it in all his books, but he's got like four setups that you can work on. And Ali will talk about breakouts. You can focus on breakouts only and just and do quite well. To emphasize on that, um, market is a two-dimensional phenomenon. It either stays put or breaks out. There's nothing else. Everything oh. that uh, we do as a trader is defined based on breakouts. So it looks mm -hmm. like, like, you know, somebody posted a comment on one of our YouTube videos I think about six or nine months ago, saying that uh, if you go to learn from Ali, you're just going to learn breakouts, and these guys are one trick pony. Well, there is no other trick in the book, honestly. So yeah. if you really want to become a good trader, you really have to understand breakouts. Because whenever, I mean, this is the definition of a breakout in classical um, technical analysis that every time the behavior of the market changes, there is a breakout. And that includes stop stopping to break out and diverting your, or changing the behavior into a trading range. That is also considered a breakout. So it's actually much deeper than what it seems because the definition is fairly simple. Like, you know, bar goes above the high of the prior bar, you have a bull breakout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct, but then all the other things that are based on breakouts and just understanding them correctly, that takes, you know, a fairly long period of time. But really, mm -hmm. if, if you just focus your energies on learning breakouts really, really well, then everything else becomes a lot easier to understand. And um, the knowledge is more cohesive. Yeah. And for those of you that haven't had a chance, if you can see this link, this is the link that of the article that Ali wrote back in January of 2022 about becoming a professional price action trader. Really worth reading. Thanks, Brad. 
Okay, just a quick one. I, I want to get out of the way and let uh, Ali talk more and Brad talk more because this is a Ali and Brad Q and A more than me getting involved here. <laughs> but let me just comment on this one here because this question came up several times last time. Where can I see this? Well, go to the website, my God. You yeah. know, read the read the manual as we say. Go to here and. Everything you need to know, there's an introduction from Al, is the detail, the price, the timing. And if you go down to the workshop here and click open, you can see that we've already got it all mapped out. It's unlikely to change now, not much at all. And so we've got a full four days here. So all the information is on the website here. And then when you go to the website here, you can click this button here and go to the actual where you can pay for a member one, you need to have at least one of these. And you can see we've got available tickets, so now 10. So we might have to squeeze a few more people in here. In fact, available tickets for the early bird family ticket, so somebody who's in your family can join at a lower price at the same time here. And then you can go through this, through this procedure here and pay and then you'll get an invoice emailed to you at the end of it but that's that's where all the information is and so there's a lot of information here and there's some questions related to the bonuses and other stuff along here and that's what we'll, we'll be getting into pretty pretty soon anyway okay so uh, this Okay, uh, you, Ali and Brad, I mean, let, I'll step out of the way and just listen to what's going on in the background, and then you can, and I'll pop in when I think it's necessary, but not that, not that necessary. And I did say I've got some questions which I'll try and pop in from me. Well, the, I I'll, I'll go. Can, go, go ahead, on, Richard. Now, what you, I was going to say, I've got the questions here, I can... Uh, I can try popping that that one up for Ali now to see. But there's this actually four questions there, which is a little bit – let me see what it looks like. Wow, it's a little bit too much, isn't it? No, it's not too bad. Yeah. Is that a good starter, Ali, for you to get to, to get moving with? Uh, yeah, sure. So we'll be notified by email when it is available. So this is regarding okay. – Breakout. Yeah, so, <clears throat> all right, so um, my presentation in this year's uh, workshop is going to be primarily about market behavior, but we need to make um, some preparations for that and to prepare you for participating in the market behavior presentation and the follow-on uh, interactive workshop. That's the next session after, after the break. Uh, we have to make some preparations, and I thought the best way to do it is to um, give everyone a copy of the videos that I produced for 2022 workshop, because that workshop was heavily emphasized on breakouts. And we're going to do it, not today, but closer to the event, because I want everyone who comes to the event be fresh with the with that information. So if we release it now some people will watch it they'll forget it it's not going to be fresh so we want everyone to watch those videos at least once probably more than once uh in the weeks leading up to orlando so wait for it we are still too far away from the beginning of the workshop and you're going to have it you know as we get closer now what's the next question um Sorry, Brad, can we go back to? Yeah, I've got it right here. Yeah. Mentioned a visual reference for PA theory. Um, all right. So I don't know what you exactly mean by that, but uh, one of the things that you're going to get is the latest version of the breakout indicator paint bar that I wrote for my own students. You're going to get that, and we're going to be using it in... Uh, in the trading days, during the two trading days. So if you mean uh, that by visual reference, yes, there's- That's what they mean. Yeah, I think so. 
is the indicator available for TV or Ninja? All right, so uh, the answer is both yes and no. No, because I don't program in PineScript or Ninja. Therefore, you know, those are not my platforms. I, I don't trade on them, don't use them. But um, my students do. And in fact, uh, James, who is also one of our coaches in Systems Academy, he's a very good PineScript programmer, and he has translated my TradeStation code to uh, TradingView's PineScript. So you can get a copy of that if you are, if you're interested. Uh, for Ninja, I have one of my other students is a graduate of last year's Systems Academy, and he is uh, probably going to come to Orlando. I'm not sure, but uh, he's a very good programmer too. In fact, uh, he has had 30 plus years of career background in um, software, and currently is a senior architect uh, for a company. Uh, in the U.S. in California, uh, he translated that code for Ninja version eight, Ninja eight, and you can have that code too. But just so this is the yes part. What about the no part? Uh, there is no guarantee that these are hundred percent accurate translations of my translation code because I cannot verify them. So that's the disclaimer that comes with them. But if you're okay with it, I mean, both of these people are um, very detail-oriented programmers. So I don't think they have made any mistakes, but just know that there is no way for me to fully um, guarantee that these are 100% accurate translations. And I believe for most people that have TradeStation, you can get the data for it for just about free these days. Yeah, but you're going to have the TradeStation and multi-charts versions that I wrote myself. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next one, Brad. So, Ali, yeah. here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. How is the workshop experience going to be different from your PTM sessions that you do on Saturday? Um, <clears throat> well, what we're going to do, and let me actually... <clears throat> you going to share an example? I'm just going to show you what we're going to do for this seminar. Um, just give me one second to share my screen here. All right, so... Um, okay, so now you can see it here. So this is a workbook that I'm currently writing. And this is an exercise workbook that we're going to be working through on, um, on day one. So in the morning, we're going to have some lectures and presentations. And in the afternoon, we're going to devote the entire afternoon session to work through this. So if we go to um, list of exercises here, uh, these are not finalized, I'm working through them. But they are based on the three phases of the market cycle, the classification. And then there is a final section down here that um, relates to anybody who wants to do day trading. Because uh, day trading needs some more understanding of the day structure and the details that are not present on uh, higher time frame charts. Like, you know, for example, how do you deal with the opening gap? How do you deal with the opening range? Stuff like that. Uh, so we have some extra exercises here that only applies for day trading. But we're going to work through these exercises, and I can show you one of them here just as an, as an example. So exercise one out of 24, this is about breakouts and micro channels. You have a chart, you have that, um, make it bigger slightly, you have that indicator on it. And then there are there's a task here for, the, for you. And the task is to um, identify trades or setups that lead to either immediate uh, profitability or a second leg after a pullback. These are the things that you have to consider. And then there are a series of, series of questions here that based on you know, what you understand from the chart, you have to answer. 
And then we are going to go through the exercise together once you have had an opportunity to answer those questions. So in this way, I'm not the only person talking, but I actually put you through an active exercise that will engage you and force you to think proactively, think for yourself, and then compare your thoughts to the answer to the exercise that will be provided after, after you had the chance to think about it. And then there are some extra exercises for each one of these topics that is basically the same exercise, but for more charts. And uh, here, there is an answer key for those charts. And this gives you an opportunity to still use this work workbook after the session, after the workshop um, as a learning tool. So this is what we're going to be differently than PTM. Thank you for sharing that. Sure, no problem. And so, Ali, here's one more kind of question for you. For folks who are not active coders, because a lot of people know that you're, a lot of your background is coding. For those who are not active coders or use TradeStation, what do you recommend that they do to better prepare for the workshop? Um, as I said, you know, we are going to give you videos from the 2022 um, workshop. Those are my lectures in that workshop. Uh, you would see when you go through that material that you actually don't have to be a computer programmer. It's just that uh, there's sort of a hype around computer programming and automation for trading. It's not that. I mean, everything is based on understanding market behavior. And the goal for the, this, all the work that we do is to help people to understand market behavior. That is the foundation. That's the key to everything. Even, even if somebody wants to program a computer, if they don't understand market behavior, they wouldn't be able to write um, any code that makes sense or it's actually work, usable and workable. So um, don't ever think that you not being a coder or don't want to code anything will have any sort of drawback on your progress to become a trader. That's not true. But if you if you know coding, if you want to uh, work a little bit more to also program computers, it's going to enhance and speed up your, your development. Um, because you can only code well when you understand something really, really well. Um, and, and coding is like, like an examination of your knowledge. It, it quickly brings out all the gaps and show you the areas that you have to work on a little bit more to become proficient. But the other way around um, is also completely possible. Actually, that is the prerequisite for trade for programming for trading. So you really have to understand market behavior very well before you can code. But if you know coding and you don't understand market behavior, you can never become a trader. So coding is not a prerequisite. Knowing market behavior is the prerequisite for everything. Very well stated. And as far as you know, what you do uh, preparing for the workshop, just uh, review the videos that we're going to give you a few weeks before the start of the workshop and try to really understand them well. Um, that's a good chunk of work. Those are quite you know complex, lengthy videos. It's not like a one hour video. There are several hours of content and over a hundred slides in, in those videos. So try to really understand them well. That's the best preparation, I think. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. So let's see some other questions here. So Ali, will they be able to review any of the materials such as the workbook before the workshop? Or are they going to get it when it's time to review it? Uh, yeah, you're going to get it on the first day of the workshop because 
the, the workbooks are prepared in actually Orlando. So there is a company who would be printing them on paper, binding them like a nice booklet, and you're going to have them there. But um, I just showed, showed you the workbooks. There is no instructional information in the workbook. The workbook is just a whole bunch of exercises. And it's meant to be like that. It's meant to be completely hands-on and instructor-led. So we, we have to work through them together during the session. And if you have it now, I don't think that it's going to really matter all that much. Sorry, Ali. Can sure. I just pop in and say that this, this, this comment was a follow-up from a previous comment where Robert was mentioning that he would not be able to attend the workshop at all. Okay. And he was wondering about purchasing a ticket for the workshop because a bonus materials are well worth the money so asking for your thoughts on people buying a ticket but not actually attending and that's why he was asking about receiving materials handing out at the workshop so a slightly different question in that sense um i, I think richard that's actually your question because you are the administrator and you're managing the, the event so <laughs> <laughs> me, yeah. Yes, my question in the sense of there is another question somewhere here about refund policies. Mm -hmm. We don't have a refund policy as such, but what I've said to a, a couple of people is that if there's a really good reason why they, at the last minute, they really can't attend illness or, you know, similar, yes, we can arrange that. But otherwise, it's not fair to be able to give out limited tickets early in the day on the basis that people can cancel at any time. So that's a bit unfair on everybody else. Yeah. So yes, within reason, yeah, a refund is possible, and it's just personal circumstances, and you know, if the, if the case makes sense, really. And uh, other than that, you know, because the, the question the question about asking, because there are no recordings of the event itself, that will be released later. You know, buying a ticket and then getting a recording of the whole event later is not an option. So it's a difficult question. So yeah, I think well, it's we want, uh, we want everybody to be there because there is this uh, events like these are experiential. So it's not like you, you buy a book and go through it and learn it. And that's it. There is um, the interactions are important. And um, that's the real value here to to be around uh, other people to be able to you know walk up to Al or myself or Brad and ask a question and discuss your thoughts. Those are the experiences that we want people to have. So exactly. it actually makes sense to just buy the recordings or get the workbook. You know those things on their own do, do not have um, complete value. Mm -hmm. really. Yeah, I think we discussed this in the first Q&A as well, that the feedback mm -hmm. from the first workshop was that, I mean, I don't know what majority is, but certainly more than half of the people are there for meeting other traders and yeah. experiencing exactly what you're saying, Ali, the learning environment together with other traders, sitting next to people, having lunches and evening meals as we did before with people. And we've, we've actually ramped up a lot of the socializing this time because of that as well. Yep. to give people more more experience and make it an experience so sure enough yeah if you're not there the ticket well it's yeah it's it's, a, it's probably not worth you know paying all that money because it's a lot of money still yeah and all the all the travel and the hotel and everything else if you're not going to be there okay shall i step out the way <laughs> totally up and to you and, and again i would just add with that Part of the reason for being there is, is you can learn a lot from just watching someone as they're watching a chart and just their demeanor. And that was even, you know, that was eye opening for everybody in the room that went in 2022, just getting to watch, you know, and Ali, I know you're releasing an article, I believe that where you talked about your experience, even with this in yeah, 2022, so getting to watch Al's focus of yeah. just well, not looking amazing. away from the screen. You know, uh, 10 years ago, I asked, uh, can I come to your trading office and just be there and just sit quietly and watch? And he said, absolutely not. I just want to be alone when I'm trading. And then in 2022, I was sitting side by side to him and I could just do this and watch him. 
And uh, I was thinking at the time that, okay, here's, here's my wish coming true. Who taught in this environment, this circumstance? But uh, it was so educational for me. I, I wrote about it in a blog post that uh, there's a link on it on the um, workshops and announcement on Brooks Trading Course. You can go there and read and watch, take a look at, you know, the uh, photos that I posted there from 2022. But it was, um, it was quite an experience for me too. So. Okay. Will the event be live streamed? Well, no, it will not be live streamed. Uh, and a related question is here. Can we record part of the sessions, for example, the trades or take pictures? Sure, you can record, you can take pictures and trades, but we don't want people to be, we, we're not expecting to have any pirates in the room, you know, taking stuff out and streaming it off elsewhere. We are going to set up an intranet within the room. That, that's something that Ali is working on, and that, that will allow you to see a lot of what's happening on their screens when it comes to live trading. So that will certainly be a, a boon for people to have it in front of them. But again, we don't expect people to be looking at this from a, you know, from a theft point of view, you might say, because it's still it's still something that people are paying for to go to, to experience, to be in the room. And we don't really want stuff to be you know, throw, given away, as it were, in that sense. Yeah. So uh, just to um, explain what we're trying to do. Uh, last time, one of the issues that we we had there was that people uh, told us afterwards that the video projectors were not uh, clear enough because, you know, they're good for presentations, but when you have charts on the big screen and there are lots of small numbers and, you know, detailed computer graphics, uh, it was not as clear and high resolution as we wanted it to be. So we have already asked for much better equipment this time around. But, you know, uh, as a plan B, I thought, well, let's see if we can broadcast my uh, computer's screen and Al's computer screen directly onto uh, your laptop if you're there and you, you bring a laptop with you. Um, I've found a solution for it, and uh, it's actually quite simple. So all that is required is to set up a video um, server on our computers, and then you can connect to it using a browser and get a, you know, live updating uh, video stream of my computer screen there. So that should alleviate any issues that projector, projectors potentially could have. But this is not tested. I have tested it with uh, three computers, it works. But with 120 computers, there is a chance that there might be some technical issues, but we cannot simulate that. We're going to do our best to make sure that it works, but if it does, it's going to be our plan B. If it doesn't, then um, the venue has promised better projectors this time, so we'll see. Okay, I'll just answer this quick one before bringing in Brad in, because Brad, it's about time Brad answered the question we've got here for Brad. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're getting a lot of feedback, or I'm getting a lot of feedback saying, hey, why not New York? Why not Europe? Why not somewhere else? Why not Hong Kong? You know, why not all these exotic places in the world? I think the answer is yes. It's something that we can look into. And it probably does make sense to do, certainly once a year. And the problem's going to be, to be quite honest, is to get Al involved because Al, if you've been in the train room, you know that he can't talk for too long these days without his throat hurting so he's got to be very careful how he talks at this workshop so it'll be a good experience to see how we go this time but yes we're looking at different locations people have said singapore is a nice place bangkok that i was in last month for a couple of days is a, is a really good option cheap and good for asia and good for a lot of other people in europe as well so yes we'll look we'll look into that and so the Brad, there was a question here, right? So let me throw it to you and let me get out of the way again, just to sure. save some screen space. Okay, so bye for now. <laughs> okay, so the question says, Brad is scheduled to speak about Always In. So question, will he be adding anything new to this theory? 
than what is already on the trading course. My plan with that is to add my viewpoint of always in. It's going to be still the same concept as what Al talks about in the trading course. The biggest thing I want to highlight and explain is one has to understand, kind of goes into alleys with in terms of breakouts. One has to understand what is the major and minor reversals on the chart and what are the important stop entries of the day. If you listen to Al, you hear him talk about it all the time on every open that there's a series of bars that can dictate the swing on the open that lasts a few hours. So the biggest thing I want to explain is if you if you looked at a chart, is there a series of bars that could pinpoint what the next duration of time is going to do? So in other words, if it's always if you can find a way to see if the market's clearly always in long, what are some things you could do to at least be in the right direction? Because a lot of people that I've I've heard a lot of people they they want to scalp, but they miss out on what the main direction of the move is. And they end up trying to fade too much when the market's clearly always in long or they're selling when the market's clearly in a bull trend. So that's the biggest thing I want to cover. And there's going to be other pieces with that. But the biggest thing is using stop entries. And, you know, I, I know, Ali, I'm sure you'd mentioned you would you would talk about this. A limit order trader has to understand the stop entries on the chart. And if you do not understand the stop entries on the chart, you will not understand limit order trading. Correct. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I just want to add something more to this, and that is um, Brad uh, worked with me for a year in our Systems Academy program. And the project that he worked on was this project to, to design a trading system that takes positions in the market when the always in direction changes. So what's the significance of that? Well, the significance is if you take just one topic after you know everything that there is about system development, all the math that goes into quantifying it, make sure that it works, and then develop a system based on that concept, the depth and breadth of your understanding of that concept is far beyond whatever you can read or gain from watching a video or video course. So um, I, I think that you shouldn't miss this opportunity to learn this subject from, from Brad's presentation because, because of the amount of work that he did uh, developing a system on this concept um, when he was my student. So <clears throat> there is um, uh, the whole vision that we have for this workshop is to uh, give you information that's based on the skills that we have in system development. So all the exercises in the workbook, for example, each one of them can be a trading system. They can be developed into a trading system, but they are the core concepts. Um, what Brad has done in, in his systems academy program was to uh, develop a system that works based on this concept. And I think that what he has to say is going to be extremely interesting i would i wouldn't miss it even though i was his instructor or coach and i think you shouldn't either thank you for that ali sure and let's see there's one more here's another question so it's regarding when you and al are trading live it says Brad has mentioned that he would be supplementing some comments while Al and Ali are trading live. Will Ali be trading live in the same at the same time? And that answer is yes. So they'll be side by side with two screens behind them. And everyone will get to watch. And Ali, what's your style of trading going to be? Yeah, so uh, good question. <clears throat> um, I'm primarily a, a scalper. Um, I like, even if there's a swing and I see it, I still like to take it in pieces rather than just holding the position for a long time. So that's what I'm going to be doing because if I don't scalp and try to do something else, it wouldn't be me. So I'm just going to be me and do whatever I do uh, for myself every day here, uh, there in front of you so that you can see for what it is worth. But the focus of my work is going to be a scalping. 
And if you want to get a sense of how the room is going to look like and, you know, where it's going to be Al sitting, where it's going to be Ali sitting, just go to the blog that I wrote. Um, I think I wrote it last week. And there are pictures of uh, the previous event. The setup is pretty much the same. So you can see for yourself how it's going to look like this year as well. Thank you for that. Sure. So let's see some other comments here. A few more are coming in. So, Ali, here's a question for you. Can you see it on the screen? Yeah. My question is that <clears throat> can we use Systems Academy program to? Uh, yeah. So, we don't uh, customize per market at all. Like, you know, um, the whole premise of um, trading based on market behavior is that all the markets basically work uh, based on a set of um, primary functions or uh, basic principles, primary principles. Uh, if you know them, you can trade any market, any instrument, any time frame. Um, so uh, price action is completely agnostic to the market, to the instrument being traded, and to the time frames. Doesn't doesn't matter at all. So, um, yeah, so the answer is yes. And so a follow-up question with that, Ali, what markets do you primarily trade? Do you primarily trade in time frame? And do you trade any other markets if they're if all price action works on all time frames? Uh yeah, so there are actually <clears throat> there is a like I have to give you a little bit of background to to understand why you really don't need to trade a lot of different things. Um if you have certain financial goals for your end of year and you can achieve those by trading just one instrument in one style using just very few things, why would you need anything else? So, you know, the, the single instrument I trade, which is ES Futures, S&P 500 Futures, that gives me more than what I need to, to achieve uh, you, you know, my financial goals at the end of the year. So there's no need actually to do anything else. Now, having said that, I still trade other things, but I don't trade them as actively as I trade S&P 500 futures. And I usually use op the options market to, to, to trade those other things. So for example, if um, S&P 500, which is the market index is trending really strongly like what it has been doing past uh, few months um you can basically trade all the major stocks in that direction using a pullback entry system and instead of buying the stock just trade it using uh, options either uh, just buying the option outright or using a spread but you know that's not the bulk of my work i do it sparingly when um I see something that's really worth uh, implementing, something that I can hold for a few days. But um, those are not necessary. Uh, there is enough intraday in S&P 500 futures for any, for, uh, I don't think there's anybody here tonight that can supersede that because that's a very actively traded, high, uh, vol highly liquid market and you wouldn't really need to do anything else. And I like how you tied in to the first piece being what your financial goals are before the trading comes in play. Yeah, those, that's very that's an obvious concept you talk a lot about. Uh, those are um, like you know you don't do anything just to see what happens. Like, for example, you get into the car, there's a destination. So there's a goal in mind even before you start the car. Everything in life is like that. So when you sit down to trade, you should have financial goals, you should have performance goals, you should have implementation goals, 
So there are like a list of goals that every trader has, and they try to achieve them while trading. Like for example, just to trade cleanly and well is a goal. And that doesn't go away. Like it repeats every day that you sit down to trade. But the overarching goal is your end of year financial goals because that is what dictates your lifestyle. So if you want, if you're after a certain lifestyle, then you have to exactly know how much it costs and then work towards achieving the cash flow necessary for that lifestyle through whatever you do. If, you, if you're a trader, you have to adjust your uh, trading to meet those financial goals. And what I'm saying is that um, just trading one liquid instrument well gives you far more than any reasonable goal um, will, will require to achieve. So there's no need to trade 10 markets and be extra busy and, you know, overstretch yourself. Thanks for sharing that. Sure, no problem. So let's see what other questions we have. Obviously, someone's asking you that if leg one, if this getting a second leg is the highest probability mm -hmm. thing in the market, you would agree with that. And I'm sure you're going to cover that in detail. Yeah, so this Obviously, is all, the upcoming event. 100%. So this is all covered in the videos that we provide before the event. And then um, the focus of the market behavior um, presentation and the uh, next session uh, after that, which is uh, the work workshop uh, that I talked about and the workbook that I showed you, there there's going to be a heavy emphasis on that because that's the highest probability trade, really. Thank you for that. And let's see what other questions we have coming in the chats. Here's a question. Any, any opportunity to discuss or clarify more advanced concepts for those who attended the 2022 conference and are in the trading room? Yeah, that's a good question. So the workbook that I just showed you starts with stop order entries, very simple, you know, um, trade in the direction of the breakout concept. And as it progresses towards the end of the workbook, it gets progressively more difficult and goes deeper and deeper and deeper into those advanced concepts. So the answer is yes, that's my intention. Yeah. And, and Ali, just to kind of follow up with, with the workbook, in two or three sentences, for someone that finishes the workbook, gives it their full effort, what's the one or two things you want that person to walk away with once they have completed the workbook? Yeah, thanks for that question. So uh, one of the questions that repeats in the exercises is how do you like this strategy and give it a score between one to 10. So one of my goals is that if somebody goes through all of it, then they have a reference of strategies that um, they also know which one is more akin to, to their heart. You know, they, they like it more. It's more a fit from a character and ability point of view. And those are going to be the things that you have to focus on for the next year. So uh, you will have a documented reference of 24 strategies, which is valuable because it narrows the field somewhat. And we're going to talk about the different variations of executing on those. So it gives you some options. And then uh, your own feedbacks are recorded in the workbook. So your thoughts are recorded. Writing down your thoughts is a major step in learning anything. So we're going to help you to do that in a, a structured, formal way so that that becomes an artifact of your success, so to speak. But the most important thing there is for you to identify which one of those strategies you really like. And then that's going to show you what areas you have to focus your energies to achieve success earlier sooner thank you for that sure. and you know it sounds like 
whoever attends, you're basically giving them a blueprint with already their thoughts written down as to how much they like each one of those concepts and pretty much giving them an outline to build a trading system. Uh, yeah, every trader trades systematically, even the most discretionary trader, like, you know, Dr. Brooks or anybody else in the in this domain that you talk to them and they label themselves as discretionary traders. Nobody is 100% discretionary. Every trader has a set of strategies in, in mind and they execute on those and they know exactly how to execute on those and they know exactly what those strategies are. So that's basically what we do when we design a trading system. We come up with very clear rules um, and they are simple so that you can, you know, explain it to a young child, for example, and they will understand, <laughs> or you can tell your friend, hey, this is what I do. There's nothing very complicated in them. But what is there that is usually missing is clarity, clarity of thought and the experience of building those systems. Um, and one of my goals or intentions for this workshop is to give some of that experience to the to the audience. Uh, this is the same things that we do in Systems Academy, but in Systems Academy, we spend a year doing them. Uh, here, I don't have a year, but I have like a day, and in, I'm going to maximize the time that we have in, in, in the workshop together to impart as much of it as I can, and hopefully give you a document that you can reference later on and build based on what you learned there. Sounds like there's a lot for people to work on and learn from the workbook. Yeah, I think the actual work actually starts after this uh, seminar, because then you have to sit down and really decide which one of them you want to implement and then research them really well and uh, practice good execution. So the real work is after the Orlando workshop, really, not before it. I would absolutely agree. So let's see what other questions we have. And there's a few more questions as far as preparation for the event. Is there anything besides the 2020 video, 2022 videos that you recorded nope. that you think they should should visit? Or would you just say spend a lot of time studying those videos and be ready to learn? Yeah, so our um, assumption is that somebody who comes to this conference, they already know all the terminology, they know all the basics, uh, they have um, had some experience working with a trading platform, so it's not like they're sitting there and looking at the trading platform for the very first time. Um, they have some trading experience, even though it might be paper trading, but still they have some execution experience. So all of those things should be covered before you come there because um, we really wouldn't go through any of those things in the presentations. The presentations build on those things. So the assumption is that you already know them. Um, if you want to come prepared, come rested and uh, fresh with with the ideas that are in those videos that we're going to provide so that when we discuss you know more advanced topics we don't have to answer a lot of questions about the stuff that should already be known i like that being rested coming fresh and just open-minded yep so let's see if there's Looks like we've got most of the questions covered. And Ali, is there anything, is there a final one or two things you want to tell everybody or um, you know, final couple of statements you want to leave everybody with? I think, um, <clears throat> as I said, I think the majority of the work is after the workshop rather than before the workshop. So. Um, while you're there, try to really um, benefit from every minute of it. Um, and if there is something that you really don't understand, even though it might look, you know, um, simplistic or um, not, not something that you want to ask, just ask them. 
Um, for example, last time, somebody said in the feedback that we asked for after the workshop that uh, why Ali came late on the trading day. I didn't come late. You know, I, I like my mornings to be quiet and to not have to talk to anyone before I start trading. And on the trading day, I just did that. So I showed up on time, but not before the start of the session, so that there is no opportunity for anybody to talk to me, because I wanted to keep my mind fresh for the trading day. Now, it appears that this didn't sit well with somebody who was in the audience. They could have just asked me there and then, and they would have learned that, well, one of the things you have to do is to monitor your behavior and your thought process. And if you have certain requirements to be prepared and fresh for your work, you just exercise that every day, regardless of where you are, you know, if you're going to be trading and those things have to be in place, they have to be in place. There's no negotiating on them. So this would have been an opportunity for me to share some of my experience and for them to learn it instead of uh, thinking that, well, because I came at the beginning of the session, not before it, um, there is some character deficiencies in me. Well, there is, that's a technique for staying fresh when you want to trade. So ask questions. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. If there is something even trivial that you don't understand, please ask the question because you can't imagine the amount of planning and work that there is that goes into um, getting these events off the ground and um, presenting them. So everything is pre-planned. If something doesn't look quite right, just ask, because there's usually a good reason for it. Um, other than that, I think try to really be there with, with us. Try to be there and try to take in as much as you can, because this, is, this period is a short period of time. It's only four days. But there's going to be a lot of information presented to you. So make sure that every day that you come in, you have been, you have rested, you are fresh, you have the energy to sustain the four days that we are there, and uh, plan to do a lot of work afterwards, because that is where the learning happens, really. Very well said, Hello. Well, well said, Ali. Thank you. Well, we're at one hour, just over one hour now, so I better start winding down. There are a few questions that I can tackle quickly. I've answered this earlier. We've got about 100, 100 people in there, plus the team, so over 100 people are going to be in there. So let, let me show you some pictures of last time. Yeah, that's a good idea. So let me just come up now. There we go. So you can see here, there is Al and there's the two screens. Now this year we're going to, we're planning to have two screens on each side. So you won't have to look at Al. This shows you the same information, but when there's live trading taking place, there'll be Ali's screen here and Al's screen on this side, but we're going to have put two screens on each side. So you won't have to be either looking to the other side or we were switching screens, which was a bit of a complex, a bit messy. This is what we learned in 2022. So that, that's what it looks like. This is the mall next to the, uh, the hotel. We did get a lot of favorable feedback. People liked the Florida hotel very much. Mm. I loved it and other people loved it. And it's got a very large mall. And we'll probably have some meet and greet sessions in the mall itself because it's so spacious and we can chat and we can join together and quite enjoyable. And there's Brad and Al from 2022, as you can see. Brad is still looking as young as he ever looks. So uh, <laughs> that's another view of the desks. You can see five rows of people in a pretty uh, rectangular room. We've got a little bit more room now, more squarish. So we do have the capacity maybe to sit further back here. So to answer that question... We might be able, we may be able to squeeze another 20 people in if it's necessary because tickets are nearly sold out now as it stands. So you can see 
There was a question earlier about can I put a second monitor on the desk? Well, if you look at these pictures, it's not really very – let me go back to the first one here. It's, it's maybe not practical to have more than a laptop on the screen there because it is a workshop after all, and we're not looking to replicate your trading desk at home. Some people have three or four monitors at home, you know, so just one laptop like this is more than enough. We've had another request from uh, several people who they're not taking laptops and their eyesight is not, not as perfect as it used to be in their youth and, you know, before. So they're asking, could we reserve some space near the front for people that do have, you know, eye, eyesight problems? And I think the answer to that is yes. So we will probably allocate maybe one side here at the front or even on the second row and let people have the opportunity of sitting there without laptops and people who can't see so can't see so well and Again, richard's that's another... comment with sorry brad i was yep. just going to say with power cords for people that want to use their computers everybody there should be enough power cords right yeah yeah again the learning from 2022 was we didn't expect people to want to have so many laptops in in use as you can see there's quite a few here and we had problems with power uh, but this time we'll make sure we're going to put distribution system in that there's going to be power for everybody or at least 80 percent or more and if there is a problem we'll just a single adapter would satisfy one table no problem but yeah there's going to be no problem with power this time and there's a uh, tim fairweather he was with us last time he'll be with us again this time and you can see the space here in there's lots of room in this mall and I haven't talked to the mal operator yet. They may say no, just come along, but there's probably no need. We can we can populate an area, move tables quite easily, and it, it, it should be quite nice. And there's one of the many photos we took of people who were there last time. This is like a meet and greet or an end uh, end end session, and you know it's. I think pe people really people really enjoyed it. You know so. So that, that was something I wanted to sort of point out there. And, and also, there's another another thing here. If you haven't watched the – let me just find something else. I'm just going to play this short video just in case you haven't taken the time to watch it. Hi, everyone. I'm Al Brooks, and I hope to see you in Orlando for our workshop. Now, why should you come to the workshop? I think the single most important thing that you get from it is an opportunity to watch experienced traders spend a day trading or a day and a half trading. You know, see how they manage good trades, see how they manage bad trades, see how they act when nothing is happening at all and they're simply waiting. And you'll also have an opportunity to talk to us throughout the day. I think it'd be a very valuable opportunity to see what professional traders do during the day and also see that there's nothing magical and that you too can do exactly what we're doing. Anyway, I hope to see you in Orlando. Thanks, Richard. That was good. Okay, good, yeah. And let me just say there was something, what Al mentioned there, Ali has already said that he's primarily a scalper. Al is a scalper too, but he does promote swing trading for beginners and less experienced traders. So Al will be doing, as you can see from his presentation, a bit of both. We want to keep him busy keep him trading on the live trading days. And so he will be looking for swings. And like his presentation says, you know, basically take swings when you can and scalp while you're waiting. And that's 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 what will be happening with Al. So we look forward to that. So are there any more questions before we... Uh, just I just want to clarify that topic because that's such an important topic. Yeah. Um, swing trading is heavily dependent on correct context more than even scalping so mm -hmm. there are you know um, especially for day trading there are situations where they lead to you know high probability good swing trades but they don't set up on every bar they may be set up three times a day if you're lucky sometimes just once once a day so to catch them you have to be flat and watching but that means sometimes you have to watch for over two hours before the pattern sets up correctly, before the chart gets to 
you know, correct support resistance levels for the swing to uh, be reasonable, be high probability. So what would you do during that two hours that you're waiting? Well, we can use all of these techniques that uh, we're going to go through in my presentation to, to take uh, small scalps and um, not get completely bored by the market while you're waiting for that swing. But once that swing is there, then you can either swing trade it or you can still trade in the direction of the swing, taking still smaller trades. So as presentation is actually very important and it ties very nicely with what I'm going to talk about and what Brad is going to talk about because these are all pieces of the same puzzle. But recognizing it is important. Recognizing when it is time to hold the trade for a swing versus where, when is it time to hold the trade just for a scalp. That is a very important skill in day trading. And hopefully all the work that we're doing is going to give you um, that information or, you know, prepare you better for, for doing the same things. Okay, let me answer this one. You guys should invite Adam Grimes one day. Well, the reason why I'm popping this comment up is actually we are in touch with Adam Grimes. Adam is a member. He's actually a BTC course member, so we're all in good company. And Adam is also an owner of the encyclopedia, which he loves very much. And it is possible that in the future we'll be having podcasts and maybe even live trading with Adam Grimes one day. So this is something we can look at. There also, I'm not going to give you the name of anybody, but there may be a mystery guest appearing on the workshop. And if that happens, another famous trader. And if that happens, you'll you'll find out soon. But that's to be confirmed. But we're adding value, like Ali has mentioned, and Brad. There's a lot of value in the 2022 workshop, but there's an even more value in the 2024 when you take into account the, the lessons we've learned and the extra value extreme stuff that Ali is pouring into this 2024. It's it's really remarkable. Thank so you. I'm sure you're going to look forward to it, everybody. It's well, 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 well worth the time. And there's a question here quickly. We've got a another, not a Q&A, but a session on down to basics plan to give people, the intention originally was to show what you need to know before you sign up for the workshop. But as we're nearly full now, it seems a little bit odd to be able to need to cover that. But I think we'll still cover that anyway. So you can be prepared, better prepared, as Ali has mentioned several times already. Get prepared for the workshop. And then we'll we'll tell you what level of understanding is really necessary. So we don't get asked questions which are, you know, too basic in a way. But in, in that sense, don't even though we will have people going around, myself, Brad, and Tim, Tim Fairweather will be wandering around with them and answering questions quietly while the live trading is going ahead. You know, so that that that'll happen anyway. And uh, was there something else down here on marked up? People keep asking where to buy the tickets. If you look in the comments, Brad and others have popped up that information. And uh, yes, we're going to have, we will definitely be having two screens either side man off. So that's something that we, we're going to do because that's something we need to do. And this was asked right at the start. The live trading sessions recorded, yes and no. I'll say yes and no because we will be recording stuff. We'll have a videographer at the event part time to record the event and to use for future promotions but also we will be recording the the trading sessions somehow or other but not not in their entirety maybe but that's something we're still looking at so but it's not not promised 100 percent but and it won't be sold to people who are not at the workshop although we keep getting asked for that so it's something we need to consider because we don't want to lower the value of the event itself to people who actually turn up Did Rose decide if she's going? Sadly, trader chick. <laughs> no, Rose will not be joining us, sadly, which is a, sh a real shame. 
I've tried to twist her arm, both arms, several times, but it hasn't worked so far. And so sadly, she'll not be there. Is there anything else, Brad, Ali, that I've missed? There's a, there, are, there are some technical questions here which are really out of scope for, for here. People asking about tick charts. I use tick charts. Use whatever chart you want, you find comfortable, whether that be a five-minute, a four-hour chart. It can be Forex, as Ali's talked about. It doesn't matter what market you trade. It doesn't matter to some extent what chart you trade. But Al's general guidance is don't have too many bars on the chart. Some people use a 2,000 tick chart for the ES, yeah. which is what I did when I was first starting out several years ago. But that's equivalent to a one minute chart or a 30 second chart. And it's far too fast. So, again, sure. choose the chart that you like. Basic price action is all is all you need. And uh, would you like to say any more about on that, Ali? <laughs> um, not really. I mean, I 100 percent agree with you and Al on this. Um, I use the five minute chart myself all the time. And uh, I also have <clears throat> a faster chart at the corner of my screen that uh, I jokingly call it the rear view mirror, like the side mirror. And that's yeah. the 100 seconds chart. And it's yeah. lower than a minute chart. Every uh, three bars on a 100 seconds chart becomes one five minute bar. Mm. And if there is a situation where I want to trade intra bar, you know, during the formation of a five minute bar, and I want to have some bars that close and help me to make a decision, I take a quick look at that 100 seconds chart, but I don't trade the 100 seconds chart. And I yeah. don't think that even you should be looking at anything else but the five minute chart, because that is for an advanced trader who doesn't need to think at all. Like, you know, uh, you just look at the chart and you see all the information with the first glance. If you're mm -hmm. at that level, you can use two charts, that's fine. But if you're not still at that level, and that takes more than five, maybe eight years to get there, um, then just look at one chart. And the slower the chart is, the better, because it gives you time to think. Yeah, that, that was one of Al's main points on the five minute. He's got time to think. And also, you know, he knows exactly when the bar is going to close. <clears throat> Which for me, I'm using, I use a tick chart. And of course, you don't know exactly when the when it's going to close but that you know that doesn't bother me mm -hmm. but i do have a five minute small chart just like you ali i've got a small little chart off in the corner there showing the five minute because mm -hmm. i'm always thinking having been in the trading room just like brad and yourself ali what is al thinking what is Al? what will al do here so it's a bit of a distraction but distraction is the right word you know just focus on one chart and then as you get more experience, yep. you can look at other charts at the same time, other markets at the same time, like the DAX and other things, and so on. And By the way, to emphasize that, Richard, even mm -hmm. on a five-minute chart, all the time that you have to make a decision is somewhere between three seconds to 10 seconds. Yeah. So it's not like five minutes, oh gosh, it's a long time. No, I mean... No, no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, the time that you have to think and press the mouse button ranges yep. between three to 10 seconds, which means you have to be actually quite fast to do it. Now, if you push yourself to an even faster chart, then you probably have just one second to make a decision. And that's beyond most traders to do consistently well. Yeah, I use an 8,000 tick chart. And at the moment, well, well, not yesterday, but recently it's been a bit slower. So I've dropped down to a 6,000 tick chart. And that's equivalent to about a three or four minutes in duration on average because it varies during the day of course <laughs> and sure enough and again i get questions well i get a lot of questions as you know through the sort of the support system and one question i keep getting is like buying the close you can never buy the close on the same bar that the bar closes because by the time the bar is closed you're already painting the next bar yeah. so like ali just mentioned you've got to be pretty quick to get in at the price that you want and the market may well be away from you before you've got a chance to place that order. So, but then you, that, that's where that's just just a technicality. And you know, I, I'm a great. I'm always arguing with not always, but I often argue with Al about sort of ticks and stuff because to me, because I use order flow as a lot of you know, and to me, one tick either way is 
is meaningless most of the time because it's just one order. You know, you can place one order, buy or sell, and move the market one tick. Yeah, big deal. So if it moves one tick, that doesn't mean somebody's coming in with a lot of orders. It just means that one order has been placed in the inner, you know, what we call the inner bid, bid and offer. But these are all things that we can talk about at Orlando as well, because we are planning to have a room separate to the main workshop, which we can use after hours, as well as during hours for meetings or for special needs, small group discussions, and maybe for our meet and greet as well. Not sure where that's going to be at this point in time, but we'll have, we're going to have a lot of socialising. Okay, have I said enough? <laughs> I just want to add to your comments about tick charts. Yeah. So if you, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, but I don't trade tick charts. But when I ask people, why do you trade tick charts? They say, because they trend better. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? Uh, all the bad bars mm -hmm. that you see on a five minute mm -hmm. chart, they are signals for very good trades. And I actually want to see those bad bars because they make it, make my life as a trader a lot easier. So just because the five minute chart does not trend as well as, you know, seemingly a tick chart trade trends, yeah. Yeah. doesn't mean that there is a deficiency in it. You just have to be able to use it properly because those bad looking bars, they're actually, they're, they have information, they give you information, they help you make good decisions. Yeah, that's a good point. I 100% agree with that. The reason, again, the reason why I use a tick chart is because I'm interested in order flow. Yeah. So I can mathematically compute, as you might say, I can see what's happening inside each bar from a orders point of view. And I would argue you can see more in that respect, of course, because you've got the data. So it's more more of a distraction if you're if you're fairly new to trading. But the five minute chart, again, is such a valuable time frame. It's still, as you said, there's so much value in there. But I, in my experience, I feel I can discern other things on the tick chart that things like tails, you know, when people very often you might say, oh, the sellers are coming in here. The sellers are coming in here as a as a you know, as a point in mind, but on the tick chart and on the order flow, I can say, well, no, 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 be careful here. But having said that, the institutions and the smart traders out there, I mean, they're smart for a good reason, and they can use order flow. They use ticks, you know, the New York tick, the, uh, the, the tick instrument. They use these things all part of the, our, I don't want to use the word manipulation, but it is really in a way it's manipulating the market to make money. And so, so to me, that's again where the tick chart can help. And it's only a help because it keeps changing and things like stop placements are critical. You know, we know we all know about people taking out stops, people being the smart traders, stop runs, support and resistance is where we look for trades. But support and resistance is where big traders are looking for liquidity. And so it's it gets very it's very complicated. Trading is every as we all know is very complicated and no one method is the best. It all works well, but price action methodology is unique in that it really it's all you need, isn't it? And whether you're using a tick chart or a five minute chart or a what daily or a weekly chart, it's the same basic process. And things iron themselves out in context, looking back and seeing. I'm talking too much again. Any more questions before we finish? <laughs> I don't want to go off topic too much, but anyway. You know, I think that's well said. Hmm. But I love my tick charts and I won't be changing anytime soon. But anyway, and then again, the point is you have to stay within your comfort zone, whatever it is. Yes, exactly. Uh, exactly right. And the first piece of that is you have to recognize what your comfort zone is in the first place. And that changes as you evolve and grow as a trader, your comfort zone expands and it changes. Wow. So you have to be open to changing as it changes. Yeah. So Ali, just carry on talking. Look at this one from Manfred here. I think we've mentioned some of this already, but again, I get, I get, Questions, people saying, oh, what can I do? I've been trading for three years now and I'm losing money still. Blah, blah. We mentioned that earlier in the in the webinar here. But just a general wrap up on the best way to train for trading. Um, you have to do, um, initially, you just have to learn 
market behavior. You know, call it price action, whatever you want. I call it market behavior. You have to understand market behavior in all the facets of it, and then uh, do deliberate practice. I talk about it in deep detail in the article that is on Brooks uh, Price Action website, and it is also a copy of it is on my website. You know, so feel free to review it. But uh, I have laid out all the the roadmap there in that article. Uh, basically, it boils boils down to um, understanding market behavior as the first step, doing deliberate practice, and deliberate practice means the same style that I showed you in that workbook. Take one concept and completely work it out, understand all the nuances and variations of it. <clears throat> and then start implementing it as a one concept only. Like, you know, you see other things, the market entices you to do other stuff, ignore all of them. Just focus on that thing that you have researched and practiced. And you don't do anything else until that one thing is down cold and you're completely fine with it. It doesn't take any more mental cycles, you don't get a headache or don't become tired after the session is over. And then you can move on and do the same thing for your second topic. And that's it. This is the article that Al is referring to. It's on the learn to trade menu here, becoming a professional price action trader. And it seems that the software has, there's actually a table of contents here, which is not working for some reason. That's something I need to fix later today. Mm -hmm. But what Al is talking about is how to get there, how to study, very detailed. Again, very valuable, and it takes some effort to get into. But that's what learning to trade is all about, making the effort and, and just learning, learning all this new stuff. Un well, need to understand yourself. We can talk about that in a webinar on its own. Yes. Yeah, and deliberate practice, which Ali was talking about. Don't fall for this line about 10,000 hours is all you need to be great at anything. It's just bullshit. It's mm -hmm. typical pop psychology. And people write, most books you get on psychology, pop psychology is just garbage. They're just reiterating research that somebody else has done some work and they put it all together. It's a bit like trying to find out what supplements to eat for your diet and stuff. You know, there's so much garbage research around that it's just, just take care to concentrate on what's important, you know? Yep. And uh, take it from there. Question from X. Who is the best trader? <laughs> Bit of an odd question. Yeah. Everybody is themselves. Look at... We're all different. We all do size differently. We all trade differently in a way, but we use price action as a basis and we, we add a few bells and whistles, but you know, who's the best? There, there is no competition. You are your own competition. Yeah. You have to try to be better every day. So why do you care? Yeah, there is actually, there is, there is competition in one place and that's inside your own head. Yeah. So listen to your voices, listen to those people talking to you inside your head. They're the guys which are saying, don't take this or hang on, hang on, wait for more confirmation, blah, blah, blah. This is the conversation going round and round and round and sending you crazy as you're trading, right? So other than that, there's no competition anyway. No, there's no competition. It's about meeting your financial goals at the end of the year. Do you meet your financial goals at the end of the year using trading as a vehicle? Yes or no? If yeah. you do... You are the best trader in the world because you are providing yourself the lifestyle that you want and yeah. nobody can take it away from you. So doesn't matter. I mean, that's not a good question. The question is, can you meet your financial goals at the end of the year? Yes or no? Um, in the process of meeting those financial goals at the, towards the end of the year, are you having a life? Yes or no? Like, you know, I was meeting my financial goals when I was an IT consultant, but I didn't have a life. Hmm. because I had to supervise this uh, data center implementations that started at 10 p.m. and ran to 6 a.m. three times a week. And then I had to be in the office two or three other days of the week. And I had to study two to 3,000 pages of new material every year. So think about somebody working 
a full-time job. And then on top of that, you have to supervise data center implementations and read 3,000 pages of material. There was no life. But I was meeting my financial goals. I had a good lifestyle. But um, that was not sustainable. So the real question is, can you attain your desired lifestyle through trading? And while doing it, would you have a life or not? Or you would be so stressed and damaged every day that you are completely unsociable, angry, tired at the end of the day? So th those are the better questions to ask. So, you know, what can I do to meet my financial goals at the end of the year? And what can I do to meet them in a pleasant way so that I have a life, I'm not all the time stressed and um, tired, but rather having fun doing what I like in a fraction of the time that somebody in a full-time career does to, do this, to, to, to achieve the same kind of financial goal. So I think if you, do, if you go after those things, um, you're going to be a lot more successful than competing with somebody else who you don't really know. You don't know about their lifestyle. You don't know anything about them. Good. Excellent. Thank you, Ali. What about you, Brad? Do you want to wrap up now? Because it's time to wrap up. It's one and a half hours. And thank you to everybody that's turned up. It's amazing that you've, you've all found the time. This is an awkward time for Europe, but it's all been recorded on Facebook group and on YouTube and on this link for some time. Brad, would you like to wrap up? Yeah, I was just, I mean, Ali, that was really well said. And I 100% agree with everything that you just said. Thank you. You know, all of trading's an internal competition. And it's really, you know, and Richard, you talk a lot about this too. It's really about you. You're competing with yourself in essence. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's a lot of truth to that for sure. Yeah, we've got a lot of comments thanking us for our time. Well, thank you for your time, everybody. It's all, this is a joint effort. And another great thanks to Ali for taking the time to prepare for the workshop. And he's not finished yet. I know that. He's still got a lot of work to do. We've both got a lot of work to do. We've all got work to do still. And it does take a lot of work. And uh, we're looking into more live workshops in future, for sure, because it's there's obviously a demand. And it's, it's an enjoyable event as well as learning to trade. Yeah. And right. Like Ali just said, you know, we need to enjoy ourselves. You know, I, I used to work in a power plant, you know, heavy electrical engineering, commissioning, big power plant. I enjoyed that, but wow, it was pretty tough work and there wasn't much social life when things were busy. But this is this is different. But, you know, but then again, I'm sort of semi-retired in that sense. So it's different for me. But anybody starting out young like Brad, it's a whole new world ahead to be able to manage your own lifestyle, manage your own Look after your family, all those commitments, make yeah. those financial commitments and meet them through trading, which is something which is really enjoyable. Al will say it's it gets boring in some respects. I don't find that myself. But you know, it's sort of a it, it's a wonderful thing to be to be into. So thanks everybody then. I think we've said enough. And uh now, the next thank you for joining us. Thank you, Brad. Yeah. You're welcome. We were thinking about having another Q&A next weekend, but I'm not sure if it makes any point actually now because we've covered a lot of stuff already in these two Q&As mm -hmm. and we'll get the same questions again. So maybe I'll talk with Brad about maybe we'll bring forward the Down to Basics webinar ahead because we've nearly sold out tickets anyway. So thanks to all you who have signed up. And if anybody, again, the final point that, which I mentioned at the start, the hotel – is sold out completely for the two days before the four days. So there are hotels locally, which you can get into. One place which I mentioned earlier, I've forgotten the name of it now. It's an inn, just 10 minutes walk away. Let me just get the name of that one again, just so I, uh, what's it called? Oh, it's called the Red Roof Inn. Let me just copy that in there. I've got no idea what this is like, but it's the Red Roof Inn. There we go. Red Roof Inn. Ten minutes walk from the hotel. But there are other hotels nearby as well. That's the only problem now for people signing up so late. And But Orlando is Orlando. It's full of hotels, so it should not be a problem for most people. But thanks again, everybody. 
So let's Thank bring this to an end. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Manoff. Thanks. But for Sat to choose, it's okay. Yes, yeah, Saturday to Tuesday is still okay, although the end the end bit is a little bit you know filled up. Let me just I got the latest status. Let me just have a quick look. I don't think it's any different to what well, I've got another two. We've got four people have signed up since we've been online here. So, my God, I think we're, we're going to be sold out maybe by the weekend. It's incredible. Where am I? Where am I? I'm looking for. Oh, it's in a it's in an email, which I can't read so easily. I'm looking now. Oh, yeah. On Wednesday, we're down to 11. We're down to 11 rooms available. Nine. Oh, zero on the. Oh, sorry. Where are we? On the Wednesday, 11. Thursday, 12. That's after the event. So people looking for a longer holiday with a family can still get into the hotel for six days at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, actually. Oh, hang on. Okay, yeah. I better put this, I'll probably have to put this information up on the, on the website as well because it's, uh, it's quite important. Actually, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the wrong chart. Sorry. Yeah, Wednesday there is six available and six available on Thursday. So it's nearly sold out on those days as well. Saturday is down to four. So anybody out there still thinking about whether they want to be in the Florida Hotel, I've shown you how beautiful the Mall is, never mind the rooms and is in the hotel. They're wonderful big rooms. But we've only got four left on Saturday, 15 on Sunday, 17 on Monday, 14 on Tuesday. Well, that really about matches our maximum number of seats that we can fit in. So there you go. So it wasn't good planning on my part. It just worked out that way. So I think that's it. OK, I keep telling people I'm talking too much again. But thank you, Ali. Thank you, Brad. Thank okay. you everyone for being here. Thank you, everyone. We'll sign off. So, all the best, everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Okay.